then some new things came on stream that we otherwise would not have spent a whole lot of time in. Things like hand sanitizers, disinfectants, and things of that nature. Things of which we don't even have the chemistry at all to even do here or have not done here in the Bahamas right. at any great length of time. So you would have found that many of the wholesalers within the United States where we would have gotten most of these type of items from, the like aerosol sprays and sanitizers, they were saying, we have to protect our own first. Then we will send you whatever we have left. So despite the fact that we may be a small nation of less than 400,000 people, they were still treating us or putting us on the back burner mm -hmm. because that was still, as far as they were concerned, considerable. So that started the process of slower movement and greater demands, raising the prices, typical, your typical economic storm, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Higher demand, increased prices. All right, and here it is after fewer goods being offered in the market. So when they became available, you would then you then you found sort of so you found a lot of other different brands one may not have heard prior to COVID coming on stream, mm -hmm. all right, and coming on stream in a big way mm -hmm. to be able to to see how they could best produce for the market and so on. Mm -hmm. Then of course after a while after things began to roll on, we found that there was a food distribution where food supplies were being slowed down because many of the factories um, in the United States, particularly where we would have got most of our food supplies, where they were finding that many of their people were infected with COVID. They don't know how to treat it. We're now suffering with well over 700,000 people who have died from this thing called COVID in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, we're gonna sell these people, you cannot come to work. With those factories being closed on, particularly Things like Tyson, where we've got most of our poultry from, mm -hmm. um, another pork industry, um, IBP, um, some of those major, major companies who would have produced large amounts of food, large amounts of things that we consume in the Bahamas, and the biggest two meats in the Bahamas consume is pork and chicken. All right? With that not being readily available as quickly as you would want it, therefore cause these demands to go up, prices to go up and availability to also not be as readily available as quickly or as readily as they once were. All of these things sort of caused that sort of dynamic to occur. Then, after a while, things started to subside with the, then comes along the war. Mm -hmm. And the war, as Javon would have alluded to, stated with all of the wheat supplies, bear in mind the wheat doesn't just necessarily just supply us with grains, but they also feed for these same animals that you need to have. So therefore, the cost of producing an item like a chicken or a pig goes up tremendously. Mm -hmm. So you think of what you get from the pig. You get your pig feet, you get your, your pork chops, you get your spare ribs, you get your pig ears. And we use the whole pig here in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. all right? You get your pork chop ends, you get your whole loins. You get all of these different things that we use typically in our meals. You get your sausages. All of those type of things have now become, I guess, impeded because of the fact of the war that is now in place. And then to compound the whole situation, you have a situation where you have um, difficulty with bringing in the product. So here it is now, where you may have had an increment, a small increment, increase from the manufacturer, as far as the cost is concerned, you have an even, even bigger um, cost um, stretch with the shipping costs being going up. And no indication as to when it goes until it lands in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. So you have no pre-knowledge of this happening until the product reaches you, and then you say, oh, the price just increased by 50%. Say, what? How could that have happened? Mm -hmm. And we're now having, as consumers, as wholesalers, as retailers, to absorb that. And unfortunately, we have to now pass it on. The one great break I must say in of late, and I, I do thank the present government for doing, is somewhat of a levy in terms of being able to give us a bit of a breather and some of the taxations that we have. But here it is now, that in itself is coming, I, I don't want to be sound, you know, I'm ungrateful, but it is coming a bit late when you consider the Bahamian who has to consume on a daily basis, everyone who has to consume on a daily basis, when you've had VAT and the um, duties and all of these extra costs being added on on a regular basis mm -hmm. and, and, and. And it makes it very, very difficult for the consumer now now there's some bit of a relief. Hopefully things will begin to look a little bit better. But even still with that, it's going to still pose a big of a problem for at least another 18, 18 months or so. Right. And so in, um, considering that, I mean, the, the, the 
the pandemic has really given us a rude awakening across the board. Um, yes. Many industries have found the need to incorporate new technologies and pivot and, 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 and essentially rise to the occasion. Mm -hmm. um, what have you seen been done here locally in terms of um, basically improving our food security situation, whether it's on the, the farming, agricultural side, or uh, anything else that can be done to, to really improve the security? Well, backyard farming is actually increased by among a, a small group of people, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. it has not gone a teeth yet whereby, for instance, you, Mr. Jones, you've now producing um, enough sweet peppers, and I'm producing tomatoes. We're not bothering enough or doing enough mm -hmm. to cause that change in, in, the every, in our own neighborhoods yet. So we're producing some of these things, and then sometimes, you know, sometimes we have good product, sometimes we don't have good product, but not mm -hmm. enough whereby we're causing a, a true change in our pocketbooks or seeing those changes in our pocketbooks. So we're still relying on the food stores to be able to do. Now, yes. what we've not seen happen is where enough has been done, where we've been able to pool these resources, say the likes of a, a Javon Butler, mm -hmm. who has said, okay, I see Mr. Jones and I see Mr. Butler now has um, these different products. Let me see if I could bring these together or bring them together and get what they have, store it for them, and be able to distribute for those who are unable to get to them, specifically. Mm -hmm. And so our distribution seems to be off in terms of how we bring these things to market, mm -hmm. be it for the season, because here it is now, we grow everything in one season, mm -hmm. and you grow in tomatoes, and I'm growing tomatoes, and everybody's growing tomatoes, mm -hmm. and so therefore we have this excess spoilage, mm -hmm. excess amount, and it spoils, not being used to do anything else, like say for instance, making of tomato paste, making of ketchup, making of all these other things that tomatoes would be used for, other than just in its pure original form. Right. And so therefore we have all of this going on right now, and with all of our produce that, is, that has happened. We have not seen enough change happen within the market to cause this sort of thing to happen, the food security to really be done. And I hate to say it, but we tend to politicize our own food supply, which is something we ought not done. Mm -hmm. We ought to look at this and saying this is really an agenda that is national. It being national, no matter who is in power, should really take this very, very seriously and give it teeth. Giving it teeth by means of how we really go about tackling those individuals who happen to have the facilities to be able to store these products and to be able to get them to market on a continual and ongoing basis. To strategize how we're gonna go about making this tomatoes available in January, in June, in September, and in December. Mm -hmm. Um, by the um, whatever new technologies are made available. And there are some out there that we can actually adapt and begin to use. We've often been told on numerous occasions that we don't have the soil in which to do it. Well, I visited Israel in 2000, in the year 2000, and that's almost, that's 22 years ago. I noticed that Israel has similar type of land base as we do, sand, and not really soil, mm -hmm. but yet still, most of its export of its produce, which it produced, was going to Europe. Fancy that. It produced enough for itself and also enough to send to Europe mm -hmm. on an ongoing basis. And I figured the Bahamas, in its climate and in its range, could do the same thing. That's right. We certainly have enough land. We surely it's, have enough land. It's not like our population. Absolutely. Is that and so therefore we, and I think we have the, archipel the archipelago that we live in, to actually work to our advantage, but we're not using it sufficiently. So my, my reality, um, being, com, coming out of FinTech and being involved in FinTech today, I see that transition um, from the digitization of creating that marketplace that is mentioned by Alan, mm -hmm. um, and it's at, it at, it's at its infancy. So there's a lot of backyard farming. There mm -hmm. are individuals who, you know, are presently just sharing their crops, their produce, you mm -hmm. know. Last week, my neighbor gave me a handful of dillies uh, that grew on his dilly tree. Um, but creating that uh, market end-to-end -end logistical supply chain is something that's being discussed, something that's being addressed. I see that there are several entities that are coming out of the ground um, where they are now looking to get into the space of being incubators for several farmers. Um, we've seen successes with farms that are now located on Glasson Road where they're using um, the container models for farming mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everything now is the, the um, holly, what do you call it, the um, hydroponics, hydroponics, hydroponics right. the hydroponics. So s 
small positive incremental steps, mm -hmm. it's moving in that direction. But, but, the thing, but the thing about it is, Javon, I, I hear you say that, yeah. and I agree with you in, as far as those small steps have been made, but those small steps have been, have been made for the past 15 years. Yeah. We've now had three successive governments that have done and spoken about the same thing, and yet we have not gotten past base one. Surely by now we should have been a whole lot further with it than we have been. Now I hope that this time around we actually give it some real, real wheels so mm -hmm. it can actually roll and make it a going concern moving forward. But we have not really, really seen that. What would you uh, say is the main inhibitor for, for um, backyard farmers coming together, pooling resources and, and getting them out um, for, for useful consumption? Well, the backyard farmers have done what they've done out of pure desperation. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that they've noticed that these prices are so high, mm -hmm. they've now started, you know what, I need to do something. Mm -hmm. Their backs were against the wall. I don't have the monies going in. Mm -hmm. I'm unable to go to work as I once could have because now, here it is now, my bosses have said to us, we're unable to come to work and many of us aren't food distributors like such as myself. Mm -hmm. And so I work in a bank or I work um, in an insurance company and so on. So let me find something else to do to use, utilize my time and my skills and utilize some skill set, even in developing a new one. Mm -hmm. Let me try this farming situation and see how it works. And they had success. Mm -hmm. And with their successes, they then went ahead and it sort of just sort of began to share. And in their sharing, others got a hold of inside to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it was a wonderful thing to get started. Now, how do we continue it? How do we mm -hmm. now pull these people together to cause that to happen? Because here it is, Gladstone Road has been running for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. How do we now get those people to market? to be able mm -hmm. to get those products on our shelves mm -hmm. in a regular grocery store and to get them to sell their stuff on a regular basis, to put whatever the requirements are needed. So we don't just have products here in our stores, but we can also even begin to sell them internationally. That's right. And I think that those type of things are things we need to try to meet and make happen. Yeah, I think um, yeah, when we come back from this break, um, we, we do need to explore um, how we're going to basically achieve scale yeah. and then take it to the next level. Yeah. Right, uh, in terms of um, uh, exporting and taking some of our unique uh, Bahamian uh, cuisine and treasures to the world as Indeed. well. Exactly. From a cultural engagement pers perspective. Right, so that, that first segment was brought to you by Milo Butler and Sons Distributors, uh, as well as Agio Digital. And we'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> 